Hey everyone, good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Here's another inelastic collision problem for us that's a little different than the others we've done so far. Basically, we're going to throw a dart at a hanging lead sphere. That dart will get stuck inside the sphere and the impact will cause both objects to swing in the path of a circle. We want them to do a complete loop. And the whole idea of the problem is to find the smallest velocity that the dart could have in order to make this circular motion occur. To solve this one, we'll use an approach that's similar to the shooting a wooden ballistic pendulum video where we figure out the velocity at some later point in the movement and then work our way backwards to get the initial velocity of the projectile. I'm going to start by calling the bottom position of the circle y is equal to zero. Once the ball swings to the highest point, it will then have a y value of two times the length of the wire. We want the velocity at the top of the circle first, so let's draw a free body diagram at that position. We have the weight of both objects pointing downward, as well as the force of tension from the wire. And since we have circular motion here, a centripetal acceleration vector off to the side is required as well. If we do a sum of forces in the y direction, everything is going to be negative, which we can flip back to positive by multiplying both sides by negative one. At this point, let's stop for a moment and think about what's going on here. The dart will have a minimal velocity, which means that the combination of both objects moving in the circle will too. And in order to have circular motion, there needs to be a non-zero centripetal acceleration. So can we minimize that somehow in this line here? Well, we can't eliminate the weight of both objects. That's always going to be non-zero, no matter what. However, what if the tension was zero at this point in the swing? If that were the case, then we could just eliminate that term and our line of work here would look like this. And that still meets the requirement of a non-zero centripetal acceleration. So this might be exactly what we need. Let's insert the definitions on both sides and then solve for the square of the velocity in the top position, this variable here. The combined mass of both objects, which I'm calling capital M, hangs out on both sides. So we can just divide that out and get rid of it. Let's multiply both sides by the length of the wire. And that's really all that's needed here. Instead of taking the square root of both sides like we normally would, uh, we're actually going to keep it like this and use the squared portion here shortly. Remember that mechanical energy is conserved after an inelastic collision. So we'll start with that conserved quantity first and then move on to momentum later. At the bottom of the circle, the potential energy will be zero since that's where we're setting y is equal to zero. There's also no friction or anything like that doing work on these objects during the swing. So that term can be eliminated as well. Here's what we have left. We want to solve for the velocity at the bottom, this variable. So let's divide out the masses on both sides first. Next, we can multiply both sides by two in order to get rid of these one halves. We said at the top position that the squared velocity was just g times the length of the wire. So let's insert that next. And with that in there, we can now combine the right hand side to a total of five times GL wire. And that's all we can do in the energy portion. 
On to the momentum next. Before the collision, all the momentum comes from the dart, since the sphere isn't initially moving. After will account for the momentum of both objects combined. And here's what that looks like. To get the initial velocity of the dart, divide both sides by the dart's mass. And everything on the right is known. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. All of these values have three significant figures, except for the 20 kilogram one. So we should probably throw this into a calculator and report our answer using just three significant figures as well. I get the following. This matches the answer found in the back of my book, so it looks like setting the tension to zero at the top of the swing was the right idea. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next problem.